Hey everyone, welcome to the April edition of the Innovators Mindset Podcast highlight video. I had so many great conversations this past month and it's just kind of neat to see all the people commenting, sharing, and really connecting. And this is one of the things that I just love about this podcast is the conversational nature. Uh, when I'm actually doing this for anyone that's interested in starting their own podcast, I really kind of just start off with the question of like, tell us about yourself and then really have to work on my listening skills to kind of think about what we're going to talk about, some questions. And it's just like having a good conversation. It's something I really appreciate. And I feel that I'm benefiting so much from having these conversations, these authentic uh, places where it's not scripted or, you know, we know what we're talking about at the end, but we're just kind of building what's happening in the moment. And I just really love doing this. And I really appreciate you all listening. And like I did last month, I want to do it again this month. For those of you that are listening, um, if you go to YouTube, if that's not where you're listening, and you just comment uh, about what was your favorite part of these highlights videos, like what's one thing that stood out to you, what's one idea that you really appreciated, and just comment and share. I'm going to pick one of those commenters from YouTube to actually uh, give a signed copy of either Innovate Inside the Box or The Innovator's Mindset, because I love having these conversations, love hearing from these people, but I also really love connecting with this community, hearing what you think, hearing what resonates with you as well. So if you just take that time to comment below what stuck out to you, uh, what idea resonated with you, uh, you might get picked for one of the signed copies. Thank you so much for listening. Thanks for taking the time to join me out of your busy day. I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoy this edition of the highlight video for the animator the Innovator's Mindset Podcast. Have a wonderful day. When I talk to you, when I read your stuff, when I see your posts on social media, one thing that, you know, like this is like, like no, no matter what the pedagogy, your leadership style, any of this stuff, like I'm sure people have criticized you for elements in your lifetime, right? I don't think anyone could ever criticize you that you don't believe in kids and believe in their abilities or believe in their abilities to flourish. Do you think that matters? Like, you know, like how much does, well, I know you know it matters. How much does that actually matter in the development of a kid? Just that belief that you have in them. It's, it's a game changer. It is the great equalizer. When people talk about equity today, mm -hmm. I think the idea is that every child, you know, my, my motto is every child deserves at least one person to be crazy about them. Yep. Um, but I also believe that, that the children must know that we have, when, we, when they know that we have the belief that they're intelligent, that they can be successful, that they're capable, it, it, it gives them this feeling that they're able, that they, that they, that that. Uh, intelligence crosses all racial lines, mm -hmm. all religious lines, all, all, all social lines, economic lines. That it, even, even if that child has had some adult in the past who doubted them every day, whether because of implicit or explicit bias, mm -hmm. the fact that an adult believes in them gives them the power. They, and I hear people, when you hear people talk about these stories all the time, how they had this one person who believed right. in them so much that they started believing that they could do it. Like they started believing, yeah, I, I, I can go to school. I can be successful. Yep. I, 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 I can get a job. I, I can start my own company. Um, so I, I believe that the most important thing that we can do for kids is let kids know that we loved you before we ever met you. Yep. So it doesn't matter what you do or say, it's not going to change the way I feel about you. And for some children, they don't hear that often that people love and care about them. And oftentimes when they hear it, it'll be from some adult in some schoolhouse. And when I finished my master's of business, um, I kind of asked to take over the entrepreneurship course. And uh, so I've been teaching it since 2013. And uh, since then it's grown into a, uh, a pretty interesting course in school that um, we've grown in sections of it and what What's uh, kind of neat about the course is that students actually um, come into the course and they invest their own money and they start up their own company and they run it for a series of weeks from ideation right up mm -hmm. to marketing, right up to um, sales. And then they really? um, close the company down, distribute profits to shareholders and basically run through the whole business process um, in a matter of 
of a couple months. So. Okay. So I got to ask you this and this is going to be someone, someone's going to wonder this too, listening to this. So what, like you're telling me that students actually invest their own money in this process. So what? Yeah, if, so that, that, that's, that's something that happens there. Yeah. So oh, we, so we partner with junior achievement PEI okay. uh, and uh, the, they can invest up to a maximum of $20. Oh, okay. Um, is, is, okay. Is, is the most a, per, a person can invest. So if there's six people in a company, um, they can invest $120 or they can That's get right. outside investors as well, but no one can invest more than $20 individually um, okay. per person. And, uh, and then of course, you know, if there are situations where a student um, is struggling to find the, right. the money to invest, the, the, the junior achievement or, or the school comes mm-hmm. in at, at that point to make sure it's equitable and accessible Good. to everybody. When you talk about the idea of uh, co-constructing curriculum, like what does that look like right now? Like, give me like an example of what sure, that could look like. I definitely can. Yeah. So the first time I let go of control enough in my 12th grade AP lit class, I used to teach Hamlet a certain way almost mm-hmm. every single year, right? There were certain objectives that had to be met. I might have varied some of the projects that went through, but there was there was a time frame there was an overarching idea that I was trying to accomplish. And usually after Hamlet, we went right into Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead. And then the kids wrote a one act play and blah, blah, blah. Right. So when we were doing Hamlet, one of my last years at that school, I actually gave out on every single desk copies of my lesson plans for the entire unit, the projects, everything. And I said to them in small groups, these are the objectives we need to meet for this for this lesson, you know, for this unit. Um, Hamlet's a pretty relatable character to kids their age because Mm -hmm. he essentially, that angsty sort of thing, (laughs) going back to that, um, he is. He's like dark and brooding and, you know, there are ways to connect with him. And so I said to them, you have two choices. In your group, you could come up with a project or you could default to what we've done before. And then as a class, we'll vote to see which one we're going to do. Mm-hmm. And then if we decide on one of the projects that the kids decided on, you'll come up at lunch one day and we'll eat together and we'll design the project together, timeline and all. And you will help me construct success criteria. What is this going to look like? Benchmark ideas, blah. Needless to say, these four brilliant young ladies came up with the most amazing project Mm -hmm. I think I've ever done as a teacher where what they decided was they were going to psychoanalyze a character from Hamlet. And the project was broken up into like five parts where they first had to mine the text to find out, you know, do good characterization of what Shakespeare said about this character. And then they had to do research on um, psychosis related to the characterization And then they had to come up with a solution for the psychosis and create a movie. So there was like storyboarding, script writing, um, and then actually creating a movie that diagnoses this character and helps them get the treatment that they need. Mm -hmm. Right. And then we were going to screen those movies because everybody was doing a different character and provide feedback about what they learned about the character and how close it was to the text itself. So that's how I was covering the full text in that way, instead of, you know, sitting in a circle and reading act by act by act. I feel so blessed to have so many opportunities and I, I, I see people as gifts to me, right? Relationships Mm -hmm. are gifts to me, you know, students are gifts to me. The day is a gift to me. And so when, when I, when I, have interactions with people I want to reach out and so a lot of times I reach out to people and say hey I listened to your podcast and this is what resonated with me so and thank you for sharing thank you for amplifying people's voices and through that I just met more and more people uh, Teach Better also has an admin mastermind so I've been part of that for the last few months uh, every 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 Tuesday and met an, a lot of new people and uh, you know it just it's like the more you have of something, the more you want of it because it it fills my soul, it fills mm-hmm. my brain, and even being a new head teacher, I feel like I am more equipped in a sense because I've listened to all the stories of all these other administrators who have had different issues brought up, and it's almost like it's almost like we we come to our admin 
mastermind group and somebody shares an issue and then everybody just kind of wraps their arms around them and says, well, here's what you right. can try or right. here's what you can try. And then you just go back and, and you know, you, you try it and it's through listening to their stories and their advice that I feel like I've learned so much from all those conversations. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, like I have, I, it was interesting because just the other day I was having a conversation with her two custodians and one of them was saying, you know, oh, it's so hard on Zoom. You just can't have connections, you know, that way. And I said, mm -hmm. oh, I'm sorry, but I actually disagree with you. Because in the last few months, I have made so, like, I have so many phenomenal friends and such deep relationships with people that I've never met. And these are, like, real deep relationships that are, are even closer than the, the relationships that I have with people on staff, right? Yeah. Um, you know, we've had we've had deaths, miscarriages, all, all these things. And I feel like because we're part of this connected community, we are supporting each other especially through the pandemic, right? There's so many times that people are struggling with things, um, you know, uh, emotional and mental health. And we just kind of wrap our arms around each other and support each other. And I, I think it's, you know, all in a lot of my circles, we feel the same way that when we became a connected educator, it changed our lives. The other thing that I do, and again, I'm not going to reveal all of them, uh, but I'm definitely going to drop some pro tips here. One of the other things that I do every single morning, folks, some of you may laugh, but I'm going to say to you this, it's been working over and over and over in my life. I have a list of affirmations and I read those affirmations aloud to myself every morning, every single morning. You may say, well, Vernon, what does that mean? I have an affirmation that says, I am a person that does da, 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 da. And I specifically talk about whatever the action is, who the action benefits, and how it benefits that person. That's a specific thing. And I, that's just one affirmation, right? And I read that list of affirmations every single morning. Now, some of you that follow me deeply, you know that that uh, on my IG profile and on my Twitter profile and on Clubhouse and some other spaces, I have the initials NLP, which stands for Neuro Linguistic Programming. So I'm a certified Neuro Linguistic Programming coach. NLP is, is called shorthand. And that just kind of works on how we get the mind to process and work very efficiently. And one of the things that we talk a lot about in NLP is the power of you hearing yourself say something. Now, I know that's deep. I don't mean to get esoteric. I don't pretend to be this person that understands everything on this metaphysical deep level, right? But when you hear yourself, when your inner ear and your outer ear, when they come together and they hear you saying that about yourself, something powerful works, folks. <laughs>